Hey y'all, it's Meg Case Bolt from Love at First Search and in this video I'm going to be giving you a big picture overview of things that you can do to turn your website from a really pretty brochure that nobody is finding into a lead generating machine that helps bring you leads and sales all the time. This is the third video in the series. You may have watched the first two videos which were all about planning your website and figuring out what you need to put on there and then we have one all about building your website. Whether you've been walking through this entire three stage process or you already have your website and you're just trying to figure out what are the things that you can do to get it in front of a larger audience, thrilled to have you here and we'll get started with that process right after this. Hi, I'm Meg Casebolt, the founder of Love at First Search, where we help online entrepreneurs to show up in search results and then turn those new visitors into leads, subscribers, and sales. I've spent the last two videos really walking you through the process of how to plan and build a website. We celebrated at the end of stage two that you finally got your website live and it looks awesome and it feels great. <laughs> this is a really tough phase to be in when you have a website that nobody's finding. Because unfortunately this isn't field of dreams. This is not an if you build it they will come situation. After you've built your website even if you have some of those search related tactics in place when you build it there may be other things that you need to do in order to get people to find it to really benefit from it and also even if they find it they might not buy from you so in this video we're going to be talking about five steps that you can take in order to really take your business website to the next level let me give a quick overview of those five steps. Step one, I want you to optimize everything that's already on your website before you create anything new, before you start a blog or a YouTube channel or go do anything else. Don't create any offers, don't create any products until everything on your website that makes sense for people to find in search is search friendly. Step two, consider content marketing. That might mean blogging, that might mean YouTube, that might mean starting a podcast, but that's a really great way to extend your reach and give yourself more things that you can be found for and give people a chance to get to know you better before they're ready to hire you or buy from you. Step three, measure and monetize. After you've really made sure that your website's working for you, maybe you've started doing some content marketing, this is a really good time to take a look at what's working and figure out whether people are actually actually buying from you. This is the point where you can take a look at where people are coming from, what are your best marketing strategies, and how can you double down on those. Step four, expand your authority. The internet is not a vacuum. Even if you have the world's best information on your website, getting other people to talk about you, whether that's in the press or other people's podcasts or just getting listed in your local chamber of commerce website, those can make such a huge difference in getting Google to recognize that your website is a really great place that it should be recommending to others. And step five is routine maintenance. <laughs> it's like the unsexiest thing in this list and there's a lot of unsexy things that I'm talking about here but this is that kind of stuff where you're like updating old content and making sure that your site's still secure and checking your page speed and things that matter but like aren't really all that fun but you're a grown-up sometimes you have to do things that aren't fun you have to take your car for an oil change sometimes you have to do the same kind of routine maintenance on your website i'm sorry it's just what it is <laughs> i'm gonna cover a lot of ground here talking about so many ways that you can improve your website but if you want a chance to follow along with this at your own pace head over to love at first website and you can read through this entire guide you can download it as an ebook that walks you through it at your own pace so don't feel like you have to like take copious notes right now i've got it all written down for you over at love at search.com slash website. All right, let's get into some of the nitty gritty here. First thing we need to do is optimize everything that's already there on your website before you create anything new. There's such an excitement that people have around creating new content. It's like, I'm gonna go launch a YouTube channel. I'm gonna start blogging. And it's like, wait, 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 before you do that, let's make sure that the things that you already have are doing the work so that when people get to your website, your homepage is ready, your sales page is ready. People will know what to do and you can be found for those things even while you're creating creating something new. So there are eight sort of different buckets that you can think about optimizing on your website before you need to create anything else. The first is optimize your homepage. 
So many people are creating lots of new stuff and their homepage isn't something that Google really recognizes. You can check out my entire video about homepage SEO in order to get a framework to follow for this. The second is to optimize your about page, very similar to your homepage. In a lot of cases, the homepage is the most visited page on your website and the about page is second because people wanna know what it's like to work with you. So this is a great time before you start going and creating all sorts of new stuff to make sure that when people are are looking for information about you and your business and your company brand, they can get that information directly from your about page and they can head right there from search results. Number three, if you're an e-commerce business, head on over and update those product pages. Make sure that whatever it is that you're selling, you're clear about what that is. So I don't know if you're selling this necklace that I'm wearing right now, you might call it a black shiny collar length necklace. I don't know that much about necklaces. Or honestly, this kind of, now that I'm looking at it, it kind of reminds me of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's Descent Collars. So maybe you want to say like Descent Collar inspired necklace for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? If you're selling some sort of product, you want to make sure that it's clear and descriptive what that product is so that people can find it even if they don't know what it is that you specifically have named it. We've got a whole video just about product page SEO that we'll link to here too. Now, if you don't have physical products, if you're not an e-commerce shop, but instead you sell services or group programs or courses, this is a great time to optimize, number four, your sales pages and your services pages. I don't want you to feel like you have to shove a bunch of keywords into these pages because the most important thing about sales pages is that when people land on them, they want to buy whatever it is that you're trying to sell them on that page, not that they definitively land there first. You can use other content to engage them and then drive them to your sales page, but if there is somebody who's looking for a self-paced SEO course for beginners, I want them to find my self-paced SEO course for beginners when they're looking for that, not somebody else's because that sales page is better optimized. So just making it clear what that offer is and getting some of those phrases onto that page. That's SEO set of success, by the way. So if you're looking for a self-paced optimized course for beginners, you can grab the link below this. But I don't want you to get so obsessed with getting those keywords into your sales page that you lose the ability to sell from it. So this is just like, that's kind of a small project. Don't stress over this one too much. Number five, if you have any sort of visual brand, I want you to think about optimizing your portfolio. So if you're an interior designer, I want you to get the information about the houses that you've worked on or the projects that you've designed right there into your portfolio, including the location and the rooms that you worked on and what the scope was that you're working with people on. If you're a website designer or a graphic designer, I want to see the finished product that you did with your clients. And I wanna hear about what was the scope of what you worked on. And if you did label design, Design for a brewery, then I want to know those words, beer labels, right? Or brand design for alcohol company. That way, if people are looking for a project similar to something that you've already done, that's already in your portfolio, they can be led directly to that product and see the story of how you've worked with that company. And they'll know that you have the necessary experience to take on that project for them. Doing a whole video about portfolios is on my to-do list. So we'll link that up when it's ready. Number six on our list of things to optimize optimize is all of the photos and graphics and images that you already have on your website. You can show up in Google image search, in Pinterest searches, and make sure that the pages that those images are on perform better in search if you add alt text and captions and things like that to your images. So check out our video entirely about image SEO for more details about that one. Number seven and number eight are if you already have some content on your website. So number seven, if you already have content on your website, you may want to go take a look at what it might already be ranking for or go do some new keyword research and figure out what people would want to find that page for and then go through and make some updates to that. Whether that's, you know, blog, blog posts, show notes, whatever your format is. We have a whole video already that you can check out all about how to make those updates on existing content. And then our last piece to optimize, number eight in our list, if you're keeping track, is how your site's organized. If you already have either products in your shop or posts in your blog, this is also a really good time to organize them. If you have a product collection, you can actually use keywords to optimize just the collection piece. So you can rank for 
all necklaces and not just every specific necklace. Or if you have a blog where you've already written a lot about a specific topic, you can organize that into categories or include some tags so that people can find a group of your content and make it easier to navigate between those. Check out our whole video all about categories and tags for more information about how to do this. And if you're not sure what the heck to optimize all of these assets for, this is a really good time to either go into your Google Search Console and see what those pages and posts and portfolio pieces and products on your website already rank for, and then just amplify the way that you're talking about those, or go do some new keyword research and figure out what people might be looking for. If you want help with doing that and you want some support from me and my team, we have two ways we can help you with that. The first is our group coaching program where you can learn to do this yourself with our support. That's called Attract and Activate, or you can hire us to figure out a lot of this stuff for you. We call it our SEO strategy intensive where we'll actually dig through all of these different assets on your website and be like, name this, this, change this, do this, 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 and we'll give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to do that. So if that list of like, oh my God, I have to look at all this stuff on my website, really overwhelmed you, we can help you with that, okay? We'll have links to both of those and we also have them linked up in our SEO website guide at loveitforsearch.com slash website. So come find us, ask us more details about how we can help you with all of this. Okay, now that we've optimized everything on your website, it might be time to create something new. This is step two. We're gonna consider content marketing. Your content can be in a lot of different forms. You can have written content on a blog. You can have audio content in a podcast. You can have video content, start a YouTube channel. Whatever the format that you're using, whatever that specific type of media is, it can help you be found for things that are way outside what you can just put onto your homepage. So you can really expand the number of topics that you can be found for and get a lot more detail detailed by putting that into a search friendly content format. And the benefit here is that once people find that specific content about very targeted topics, then they can get to your website. They might find a specific blog post or show notes to a specific podcast episode. And then once they're on their website, they can start exploring. They can go check out your homepage, your about page, your services page. And since those are all already optimized and we know that they're gonna work for you a little bit better, people can learn about you at different stages of discovery. So people who are ready to buy from you can go directly to your products and your services page. And people who want to educate themselves a bit more can use some of that content. Content. These different formats for how you're creating information on your website, it's not that one is better than another, it's just that different people have different queries. And so by having multiple points of entry onto your website, people can find you for endless topics. And based on what they need from you, they can take the steps that are appropriate. Now, I don't want you to just go out and like start a YouTube channel and talk, start talking about whatever you want. I mean, you can do that if you want. <laughs> whatever. I'm not your boss. I don't tell you what to do. But if you want to use it in order to get more perfect clients to find you, you will need to have an intentional plan for what it is they're going to find you for. We have some specific resources within this blog post, within this guide over at loveitforsearch.com slash website, where you can look through how do I figure out exactly what to write? And then if you need help with it, come join us in Attract and Activate because we are not only teaching you how to do the keyword research and content strategy to actually do this for your business, but we have a group program where we can talk to each other and say, hey, if you were looking for this, what would you search for? And what are the questions you would have? And you can kind of tap into the brains and crowdsource from the other members of that program. Because it can be really hard to get out of your own head with this stuff. So having other people and other ideas coming in can be incredibly helpful. All right, step three, we want to measure what's working in our marketing. Having a like really pretty website and having one that shows up in search results, that's really cool. Nothing wrong with that. But the best thing is when you have a website that legitimately pays you and brings you leads without you needing to go out and find them. My friend Lainey Lamar tells this story of her phone blowing up with payment notifications while she was at a drag brunch and all the drag queens were like, girl, you are killing it. You want to have that that feeling where even the drag queens are noticing how many sales you're making. So once your website's been live for a while, this is a really good time to go take a look at your analytics and figure out what is actually working in my business and where am I spending time that isn't getting me results. So some questions to ask yourself is like, where's my website traffic 
actually coming from. If it's coming from social media or other people's websites, you can get that in your analytics tool. If it's actually coming from search results, you can go into Google Search Console and see the exact phrases and every page that they're looking for. So you can optimize and you can get more ideas out of Google Search Console. You can also ask yourself, how are my visitors behaving? This is a great time to take a look at what's the first page that they're visiting, where are they going after that, and comparing how different pages are actually performing against each other. You know that people who are coming in directly to a product might be more likely to buy than people who are looking at a blog post and trying to educate themselves on something, but you can see if people are going from a blog post over to the product, you can kind of get an idea of how different people are behaving and even how different people are behaving based on how they found you, which can be incredibly powerful information to figure out how your marketing is working. And you can set up event tracking so you can see at a glance how many people are visiting your most important pages, how many people are actually buying from you, and how many people are, you know, visiting and then leaving and never actually engaging with your content. Because you might have a ton of people coming from a specific traffic source or visiting a specific page and then not doing anything. But you might have another traffic source that has like a tiny amount of people, but they are buying like crazy. If that's the case, you can use that information to adjust how you're marketing, to talk about different things, to figure out what's working and do more of it. And with everything I'm talking about here, if you need help with it, you can come join our group program or you can have us do a lot of this analytical evaluation for you and then present to you what you need to do in order to make more sales from your website. And then I have a little like pro tip bonus at this phase. If you have your website optimized, if you're starting to create content, if you're starting to see a flow of new people finding your website, this is also kind of a fun time to start thinking about affiliate income to help your website make more money without needing to always be creating something new. So at Love at First Search, we make uh, about $10,000 a year from affiliate sales, most of which is completely passive. It's just people who are finding reviews of software that we use and going and buying it and we get a small commission back on that. And also sometimes we make affiliate sales from being a part of summits or promoting other people's products, which always feels really great for me when I get to make sales for my friends and get a little bit of a kickback on it. So nothing wrong with affiliate sales. That might be part of the way that you're monetizing your website without needing to always be on the delivery end of it, which is a pretty great way to make money. It does require quite a bit of traffic to make it worth your time. But if you're doing a lot of this other stuff and you can just throw some links in there, Certainly doesn't hurt, right? All right, step number four. And I should have mentioned that these steps that I'm talking about can be done in any order. This isn't necessarily once you hit a certain marketing metric, then you can start doing some of the outreach that I'm about to talk about. The order here doesn't matter. What matters is we're ex extending our reach. We're trying to make sure that people are finding us in whatever way makes sense for your audience, for your business model, and for your personality type. And that part's really important here when it comes to outreach and growing your authority. If you're an extrovert like me and you like to have conversations with a lot of people, this might be a really good time to go pitch yourself to go on other people's podcasts and get yourself out there or use some PR to get onto a radio show or local TV networks. If you really want to go big, that kind of press, you know, if you go on Good Morning America, you're getting some really amazing credibility and you can use that to funnel more traffic and more authority into your website. Or if you're an introvert and the idea of like Good Morning America is terrifying, that's okay too. You can still use outreach and get links from other people's websites that will help Google to think of you as an authority without needing to go on live TV or be clever on the spot like a podcast interview. Here are some options. You can sign up for a resource like Harrow, which is help a reporter out that will send you emails every day with different journalists and media outlets that are looking for specialists. And you can just send an email back. You don't have to hop on. I've never had to hop on a call with somebody from Harrow, but I get a lot of really great backlinks from that service. If you're running a local business, you can link in some local citations, which is basically finding directories that have listings of different businesses and making sure that your name, your address, and your phone number show up in those listings and have a link back to your website from it. It's a quick and easy way for local businesses to be seen as a local presence. If you're in a specific industry that has like 
a behemoth of a website that's a directory, go get a listing on there. So if you're a designer or an architect, you should have a listing on house that has a link to your website. If you are in mental health services, you should have a listing on psychology today that links through to your website. Just having that high quality, well-established industry publication linking to your website can be helpful. And if you love writing, you can offer to write guest posts for other people's websites and give links back to your website. We've had a lot of success with people in Attract and Activate doing this, where they go, they pitch themselves for other publications, they get a ton of traffic back to their website, they get that link back their website. As long as it's the right publication that you're writing for, it can be a huge game changer in terms of getting more people to find you and getting Google to really respect your authority. And then the last piece of this, we'll call it step five, is routine maintenance. It's the lather, rinse, repeat of all of this. And again, this isn't a linear process. Everything that I'm talking about in this video is much more of an ongoing process. But this one in particular is something where I recommend you put it on your calendar maybe twice a year and go through and double check some of these things. Here are some of the things you can do during your maintenance cycle. Check your website's responsiveness and make sure that it looks really good in all different browsers and different equipment. Uh, you may want to link some of your old content into the new content that you've created so that whenever people land on your site, it's like a choose your own adventure of all the cool stuff that you already have. You may want to check and make sure that you don't have any broken links on the site, you know, 404 errors, whether they're there on your site or someone else that you're linking to. You can remove any old pages that you're not using anymore. Although you do want to make sure to set up a redo redirect. So if anybody has that link, they don't get the 404 error that they have to go fix. You can just set up a redirect to send it to something that's more relevant than what you used to have. It's also a really good time to check your accessibility. There's a really great tool called Wave that you can go run your website through and it will let you know if there's anything that people who are using screen readers or any sort of adaptive tools would need adjusted. And so you can make sure that your website is really great for every member of your audience. And this is also a good time to check, make sure that your website's loading really quickly and do a couple little things that you can to boost your performance time. So we'll link to some resources on that as well. If you need help with anything that we discussed on this video, definitely head over to loveitfirstsearch.com. You can check out the two offers that we have that can help you with this. Again, we have our Attract and Activate program where we can help teach you how to do this yourself, or you can come book an intensive where we'll dig through your website. We'll tell you what to update. We'll tell you how to update those old blog posts, how to improve your key pages, what to create next and whatever your content marketing tool of choice is, and take a look at your analytics and see what's working and help you figure out how this impacts your overall market marketing strategy. We covered so much in this video, but it's all written down for you at loveitforsearch.com slash website. Head over there to get all of these details written down for you. You can also get it emailed to you. We have it in a free guide. It's all right there for you. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you want more tips for how to turn your website from kind of a pretty but boring brochure into a place that new visitors are going to find and then turn into new lead subscribers and sales. I'll see you next week.